Today we're reading from the Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 15, upon those retired time, the text number 15. Yo, 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 ma, 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 ma,
1, 15, 15. This, this, I know, but to, to, to amazing that this doesn't have that part in here. I don't have that part in here. This, it starts with Rasa Mangala on this, on this, uh, in this page, it's disappeared half of the village. That's real. It's straight. Somebody's taking note of this. I let the BBT know. There's like the, Lord Chaitanya ripped that page off. No, not a page, I'm missing The. Oh, wait, there it is. Sorry. My imperfect senses. What's he looking at this? Yeah. Yeah. This is he only. He only. Bishma. 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 Karna. 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 Guru. Guru. Jonacharya. Jonacharya. Shalya. 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 Chamushu. Chamushu. In the midst of the military phalanx. In the midst of the military phalanx. Adabra. Adabra. Immense. Immense. Rajanya Varya. Rajanya Varya. Great royal princes. Great royal princes. Rathamangala. Rathamangala. Chain of chariots. Chain of chariots. Manditasu. Manditasu. Being decorated with. Being decorated with. The great Jada. The great Jada. Going forward. Going forward. Mama. Mama. The mind. The mind. The boat. The boat. Oh great king. Oh great king. Rata Yuta Panam. Rata Yuta Panam. All the charioteers. All the charioteers. Ayu. Ayu. Duration of life. Duration of life. Or fruit of activities. Or fruit of activities. Manamsi. Manamsi. Mental absurdities. Mental absurdities. Shah. Shah. Also. Also. Drishya. Drishya. By glance. By glance. Saha. Saha. Power. Power. Oja. Oja. Strength. Strength. Archchad. Archchad. Withdrew. 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 Translation. This is again, we're still in the section. Arjuna is speaking to you this year. It was he only who withdrew the duration of life from everyone, and who, in the battlefield, withdrew the speculative powers, the speculative power and strength of enthusiasm from the great military balance made by the Torvalds, headed by Bhishma, Karna, Drona, Salya, etc. Their arrangement was expert and more than adequate, but he, Lord Sri Krishna, while he went forward, did all this. Translation again, I'll say, please repeat. It was he only, who, was he only who, who withdrew the duration of life, who withdrew the duration of life from everyone, from everyone. and who, and who, in the battlefield, in the battlefield withdrew the speculative power withdrew the speculative power and strength of enthusiasm and the strength and enthusiasm from the great military failings made by the Koros made by the Koros headed by Bhishma and by Bhishma Karna, Karna Drona, Drona Shalya, Shalya etc. etc. Their arrangement was expert their arrangement was expert and more than adequate and more than adequate but he, but he, Lord Sri Krishna, Lord Sri Krishna, while going forward, going forward, did all this. He did all this. Performed by the light rays, he sees the sun, he shoots a bow and he The absolute personality of Godhead, Lord Sri Krishna, expands himself by his plenary paramatma portion in everyone's heart, and thus he directs everyone in the matter of recollection, forgetfulness, knowledge, the absence of intelligence, and all psychological activities of the Gita 1515. As a Supreme Lord, he can increase or decrease the duration of life of a living being. Thus the Lord conducted the battle of Kurukshetra according to his own plan. He wanted that battle to establish Yudhisthira as the emperor of this planet and to facilitate this transcendental business. He killed all who were on the opposite.
to the party by his own mm-hmm. will. The other party was equipped with all military strength, supported by big generals like Beast Squadron and Salio. And it would have been physically impossible for Arjuna to win the battle had the Lord not helped him by every kind of tactic. Such tactics are generally followed by every statesman, even in modern warfare. But they are all done materially by powerful espionages, military tactics, and diplomatic maneuvers. But because Arjuna was the Lord's affectionate devotee, though the, the Lord did all this himself without personal anxiety by Arjuna, that is the way of the devotional service of the Lord. Om Desire, his own 
mental analysis, intellectual analysis, was crippling in the beginning of our it was crippling his ability to fulfill the will of Krishna. That's so even Arjuna was right with Krishna at that time. Understanding what the will of Krishna is. Therefore, although we have to meditate on that, we should know that the will of Krishna is revealed by his devotee, by his pure devotee. It's by the will, it is by the by the revelation of the devotee of the Lord, one who knows Krishna. Therefore we we offer our obeisances to the spiritual master who is very dear to Lord Krishna, having taken shelter of his lotus feet. We say the mantra, right? The not own Vishnu that I Krishna was I was taking shelter of Krishna's spirit. So we sing every morning, we need to meditate on this. We sing every morning. We sing. That is only by pleasing the spiritual master. Can we please? So to know the will of Krishna means it has to be translated. So therefore, Srila Prabhupada explained that the order of the spiritual master becomes a life and soul is the active principle of devotional life. We can say, oh, Prabhupada never gave me a personal instruction, or my Guru never gave me. But the instructions are there. Huh? Spread Krishna consciousness. Become Krishna conscious. Spread Krishna consciousness. <laughs> and for those of us who are in a situation where Prabhupada has given a particular instruction, whether it's through book distribution, book publication, the teaching of children, or for instance here at the we have the direct instruction of Sri Prabhupada. We're so fortunate to have direct instruction by Sri Prabhupada how to manifest the will of Radhavadava Chandra. The will of Radhavadava Chandra. <laughs> for their pleasure. So, uh, Krishna's got his ways. It's explained here that generally we try to accomplish things, or materialistic people try to accomplish things using everything in their command. Prabhupada well, says here in the book very nicely uh, powerful espionage, mm -hmm. <laughs> military tactics, <laughs> diplomatic maneuvers, <laughs> trying to accomplish our purposes. That's what we have to do. But when it comes to Krishna's purposes, he has a way. Before the battle of Kurukshetra began, both sides were trying to um, develop alliances with other armies, other kings, in order to be in a position so they could fulfill their ambition to win the war. Especially the Kauravas. So it's explained that Krishna once was, was in Dwarka one time before the battle started and he was sleeping. He was taking rest. And from Hastinapur, Duryodhana, he made his way to Dwarka. At the same time, Arjuna, who was in a different place, in the kingdom of Bharati, was also traveling to work to meet Krishna. And they both had the same idea. That when I ask Krishna for help, this battle is going to be very intense. We've got to get Krishna's help in order to win. So Duryodhana was walking through the gate, and at that time our funeral was behind me, saw you know, whatever they kind of break or at the same time. He was walking through the gate and the Yodana saw Krishna laying in the bed. And he went right to the right to the, the head of the bed where Krishna's head <laughs> sat down on the cushion next to Krishna, positioning himself. And Arjuna he came in and he positioned himself. Where did he position himself? At the lotus feet of Krishna. He stood at the lotus feet of Krishna with palms folded. And Krishna was napping. He was being fanned by one of his queens. And when he woke up, Krishna looked and he first saw 
uh, Arjuna. And then he saw Duryodhana. He said, oh, so happy to see <laughs> you brother cousins. <laughs> what brings you here? What do you want? So they expressed their desire to him. Krishna's help. And Duryodhana explained, actually, Krishna, I'm here, but and you should know that I came before Arjuna. Therefore, it is standard to honor the first request that comes to you. So he was trying to convince Krishna to, to, to give him the first request. And the Krishna said, actually, according to Vedic custom, one has to fulfill the desire of the younger. Even though I really can't say he's, he, he's younger than you, therefore he gets the first choice. And Duryodhana, internally, he began freaking out. Because Krishna explained to them, well, that, you know, there's, there's two things that I can offer. Firstly, I'm not, I'm not really going to fight in this war, so, but I have this army of a million soldiers, and and that I, I can offer that, or I can offer my own personal participation. I'm not going to participate. I'm not going to fight. So, of course, when Duryodhana had considered that, he said, okay. I know what I'm going for. <laughs> but when Krishna said, Arjuna, you get the first choice, oh. internally, Drona tried was freaking out, okay, now what's going to happen? <laughs> well, then, Arjuna's turn to speak, said, my Lord, I will, I will take you. And internally, Duryodhana was like jumping for joy. This, this is my chance. So, but, but externally goes, well, I guess I'll have to take the army. <laughs> if you if you take it, I guess I'll have to take the army. Like, like, like you didn't really want it. So, Duryodhana was so happy he immediately left and he went to, uh, he went to the commander of the Yadav. Uh, so, uh, remember, the Yadavas are all Krishna's family, but the Chantras they had codes of honor, so they went to, I can't remember what it was, Krita Varma, maybe he, he told them that, okay, now, I mean, that, that army, can you, will you fight for me? And then, yes. So, Krita Varma, you know, Krishna's relative, but he agreed to fight because that was a promise. So then, the order to left, and Krishna is there with Arjuna. So Krishna goes, Arjuna, why did you choose me? <laughs> he was kind of like teasing him. Why did you choose me? <laughs> you know, why did you take the army? <laughs> of course, I feel annoying being a toy Krishna's. Because my dear Lord, if I have you, then victory is guaranteed. There's no problem. You know, because I know Krishna, you can kill everybody yourself on the bed, even though you won't fight. By being there with me, and I want you to be my chair. I want you to be my chair, my dear Lord Krishna, please. I know that if you're there with me, then I'll be successful. And this is the measure of success, the ability to have Krishna on the side. And then, of course, this is, this is also the point that's being made here by Arjuna and the uh, in the, in the verse here, the Bhishma, you know, Bhishma, so so powerful, so great. Even 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 as a, as a devotee, Prabhupada explains in one purple that the Bhishma was defeated ultimately by, by Arjuna. That whole story is also written by Krishna. How did how did Bhishma get killed? Mm -hmm. He had he had a he had a benediction from his from his father or son? From his son that that uh, you only die when you choose. He's only died in the beach. He took a terrible one. <coughs> so he could only die when he when he, when he wanted to. So anyway, so but by Krishna's arrangement, he explained to Arjuna how he could defeat him. Right? Because the whole thing is a whole story with Alma the and she, <coughs> coming again as Shikandi, who was actually you know, a woman. <laughs> so, and Bhishma is not going to fight with a woman. I mean, that's, it's a code, you know. So, 
So when, when Sri Kanda <coughs> put before, Krishna said, Now, Arjuna, shoot, shoot the arrows now. <coughs> Sri Kanda was good. So, so then <coughs> Arjuna just kept shooting. <laughs> and Bhishma was just standing there. And that's how Bhishma got filled with all the arrows. He has a pet name by Arjuna. And the pet was, it was Krishna's <coughs> arrangement. So, Krishna, it says here that by diplomatic maneuvers, military attack, act, espionages, this is how ordinary men do it. But when Krishna does it, it's, it's, it's glorious because he does it for his devotee. And at the end of the battle of Purukshetra, when everyone was wiped out, except for Duryodhana, Duryodhana, he had lost all his brothers, he had lost all his military commanders and everything. And he's, he's, he's so tired. <laughs> and they're looking for him. <laughs> the rest of the Pandavas, a few Pandavas are left. You know, all the Pandavas brothers and their, and their and the, the Pandavas uh, associates, they were looking for him. He was so tired and fried. He's not scared, he's a Chachya. But they were looking for him. So he hid himself. In he had mystic power. He was laying in the bottom of the lake, rejuvenating his muscles and everything. He was laying there, and nobody could find him. They sent the, the Pandas sent a uh, search, uh, search party to find him. They couldn't find him anywhere. But they saw there was one lake that was exceedingly still. It, it was artificially still. And then they concluded he must be in there, so they started calling him out. Come out! Come out. The war is not over until <laughs> so you're dead. You know, so you just, you know, talks between each other, you know. And, you know, finally, uh, the old said, listen, I'm not afraid. I'm just tired. I'm just getting my breath. I'm not like that, but I'm not like that, but everything's defeated. I don't have anything. It's just me. If I fight all of you, I can kill all of you for sure, but if I fight all of you, it won't be fair. So, Choose my own weapon. <laughs> Lay in the bottom leg, and he, then they say, okay, we agree, you just agree. And he says, you just, you know, I want you to be the judge or the referee in that. Because I know you just hear that you will never do anything righteous, of course. <laughs> do you always know that the only way you can be defeated <laughs> is if she gets and he gets hit. Oh, well, so he's telling you, sir, you be the referee. He goes, you're not going to let him. So he has to agree. So uh, Duryodhana comes out of the water. And of course, the previous, in the, in the, before the battle of Kukshetra, you know, he, he, he had a benediction from his mother. Duryodhana, his mother, the entire was so powerful, you know, she had put blindfold on to keep her chastity so she would never feel better than her, than her husband. From that austerity alone, being so chaste to her husband, she developed incredible powers. So, another, another tactic by Krishna, right? So, Drona, his mother, listen, I'm really worried about, uh, uh, that I'm really worried about you in the coming war. So come to me completely naked <laughs> in the morning. And, I'll help you become your body practically invincible. Yeah. So he he starts coming in the morning and he's walking down the road naked. And who who happens to be there along the side of the road, you know? Just happened to be Krishna was there and looked at the and why my god, what are you doing naked this time? Well, I'm going to see my mother. You want to see your mother naked? Took her blindfold off and she looked at his body, and when she did, this 
whole bind and everything that she saw became hard as like a thunderbolt, an invincible, practically physically. But then she went, ah! She started screaming, what? Because she saw it had a gun shot. And all of her power, her shakti of chastity had been invested in that one glance. She couldn't glance again. <laughs> <laughs> they they couldn't do it again. And then, then, then he, he says, I told, I told you to come naked. Mama, I was, Mama, I was coming naked. <laughs> Krishna called me. He told me. To, she goes, oh, Krishna, yeah, I forgot about Krishna's intervention. Yeah, I just, Especially in Hollywood. 
and pray for me to have strength to do something. But uh, so anyway, so then he had bowed. So then the someone on there that was chosen and Bima wanted to fight. He wrote him to want to fight Bima. So then the battle began with the basins. <laughs>
that in the Shastra it talks about the importance of pleasing the spiritual master. And the commentary that in this kind we've often interpreted that to mean singularly my addiction guru. Mm -hmm. You know, within the tradition, you know, you know, Prabhupada is the preeminent Siksha guru of all of us. He's the founder of Chara. We all have a relationship with Prabhupada. And that oftentimes in the Shastras it's kind of is the relationship and ours in fact is sometimes a diksha line and often a siksha line. And so that the emphasis that we have diksha guru, but we also have siksha gurus, but we also have a relationship with Prabhupada. So sometimes we in our naivete we sometimes overemphasize just the diksha guru thinking that's my exclusive relationship. Mm -hmm. And actually my relationship with the guru begins with Prabhupada. Then there's so many Siksha Guru, so I take shelter of. And then at some point I accept the Diksha Guru. And it's not as sometimes we see devotees, they think, okay, now I have a Diksha Guru, everybody else goes away. <laughs> and you know, so he was just emphasizing that within the Shastra, just like Krishna does, and Chaitanya Charitamrita, he offers his respects to his spiritual masters, mm -hmm. plural. So we should also remember we have spiritual masters. And that's just that you have your guru, and she or he has his guru, and we all have different gurus. Because if we think like that, in the very near future, the International Society of Christian Consciousness will become the Bengali Society, the West Virginia Society, the Florida mm -hmm. Society, the Miami Society, etc. So just that idea of the importance of keeping that broader vision about the definition of, of guru. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and our, and our relationship with Prabhupada is so uh, critical because Prabhupada's uh, um, he is carrying the order, uh, should I say, carrying the power of the whole Haram Parah. When mm -hmm. Prabhupada was talking about Rubenel at one point, I, I wish I could quote it exactly, but I would say this is the will of Rubenel Goswami. Mm -hmm. uh, Rinda, what is it? Yeah, he's coming that verse uh, about the concept of Nabu Vrindavan by fulfilling the desire, you're actually fulfilling the desire of Shri Yogi Goswami. Yeah, mm -hmm. Prabhupada was saying that, you know, like manifesting. This is kind of like, I mean, bring it down a little bit. <laughs> this is what we're facing. The fulfillment of the, you know, the Krishna's arranged the, the facilities for the fulfillment of his desire, which is the desire of the Guru's army to manifest this new renown. And it's, it's, and it's all, utmost glory. It's not something that we should take lightly. You know, there's, some, there's this power in Prabhupada's order. And everything that's happened Whatever we have, I was looking at Radha and Radha this morning, and I'm seeing him. They're, they're, they're surrounded, and he's also now surrounded by, you know, this Vrindavan atmosphere, you know. So, me, I was like, Radha and Radha, they want to enjoy being in an atmosphere of the fully manifested, not a new Vrindavan, you know. So, we have to, you know, let's say, not get in their way. <laughs> A devotee could at least not get in the way, not get in the way of us, let alone we should we should be praying to be so of, of some use to that tragic system in, uh, in, in in his enjoyment. It's like well, we can't forget this is not eco V property, this is not new but the IAV property and the Phillips Council, you know. No, this is right of down China's property. It's meant for their enjoyment. If we forget that, then we're you know, how can we ever make a proper decision? You understand? It's rather than each other's property. Everything belongs to them. And they want to enjoy. So we have to work with their enjoyment.